What's going on guys? It's Kyle. Welcome to the Stock Goat YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be covering the overall market. We will also be covering the SoFi stock. And you need to understand right now, there's two things controlling the entire stock market. That is the Federal Reserve with their, you know, hawkish or dovish, you know, rate hikes, you know, 50 point basis, 25 point. That controls everything, okay? And the second thing is the CPI data. So you got the Fed and the inflation, okay? That is what is moving the stock market down to crazy levels. The NASDAQ corrected, I believe, 24% on Friday. Friday. That is bigger than the 2018 correction we had, you know, almost four years ago. So this is a nasty correction. And you've had mega caps inside of Fang, like Amazon and Netflix, fall off of cliffs. They're falling off cliffs because growth is slowing. Okay. The good news is the mega cap turds are now out of the way. And now we have the newer innovation growth stocks starting to report earnings this week. And hopefully they start to blow it out. And these, you know, hedge fund managers make a rotation out of those you know names that you know you were supposed to be buying 10 years ago into the newer innovation stocks okay that needs to happen they need to redo these indexes because the nasdaq and s p 500 it has a lot of you know bloated mega cap turds that are you know slowing growth that is not good because you know the market is feeding off of these indexes so they need to definitely redo them and these uh hedge fund managers definitely need to make a rotation in my personal opinion so let's see how these you know uh, newer innovative growth stocks you know do this week and if you enjoy this video be sure to subscribe to the channel we will be keeping you updated daily on all the breaking news covering the overall market and also the sofi stock be sure to smash the like button don't forget to drop a comment let's get into the video all right guys we can see the sp 500 finished green dow green nasdaq absolutely ripped this is that tech heavy sector that's been selling off 24 percent Small caps uh, ripped a little bit. Even crude oil was up. Everything was up, okay? We have SoFi Technologies, you know, bounced off the super lows of $6, up 3.5% on the day, up pretty solid in the after hours. Market cap right now, I got to double check with the outstanding shares. I believe it's like $5.5 billion, which is still literally an incredible value. I mean, the book value is like a $4.5 billion valuation, and they were you know, trying to go into the private markets years ago at a four billion valuation, two, three years ago. So you're literally getting a three year discount on, you know, what the company was priced at back in like 2019, 2020. This is absolutely amazing times to be buying. I'm telling you right now, technology is going to come back. It's going to come back when inflation slows down and the Fed gets everything under control. Okay. There's been rumors, you know, talking about, you know, inflation could peak in the next, you know, report or next month. So, this is the time to be buying, in my personal opinion, and that's why you're seeing, you know, the Nasdaq just rip off these lows today, you know, after a 24% correction. And take a look at the Nasdaq movement today, guys. Absolutely incredible. I mean, we're up green. We went down. We went down hard, about 1%, I believe, and then we just ripped, you know, almost 2% off the bottom. If you take a look at that one-year chart and, you know, grab that peak, guys, I mean, we did correct, as you can see there, 23 to 24 percent this is a bigger correction than 2018 guys where we corrected about you know 21 percent so absolutely incredible times to buy the fintech technology innovation sector right now uh, these stocks have sold off ridiculously you know the past you know six months and you think it's just you feeling the pain i'm telling you that some of the biggest money manager hedge funds in the world are getting hammered take a look at this guy I did a video on literally you know five months ago this is brad gerstner of altimeter capital you can see right here he had a portfolio value of 13.2 billion dollars okay ranked the number four hedge fund out of 197 hedge funds okay so this is when the market was you know at the peak okay 13 billion uh total portfolio this guy was the number four hedge fund in the world this is absolutely insane do you think he's not feeling the pain even being diversified did not save this guy take a look at his holdings now remember number four and 13 billion brad gerstner is now ranked 42 out of 378 hedge funds guys so he went from ranked number four 
to 42. His portfolio value of 13 billion is now less than four billion dollars, guys. So even the smartest guys in the world that have been doing this for years, I mean, he's been managing a billion dollar portfolio going back like to 2013, guys. So he's been doing this for nine plus years. Look at his portfolio right now, guys. You got Snowflake, Facebook, Microsoft, Uber. Gain since his last filing, 49% down, negative 40%, negative 17%, Uber, negative 24%, Unity Software, negative 53%, Roblox, negative 70%, C-Limited, Shopify, uh, Open Door, 52%, CrowdStrike, negative 2%, MongoDB, negative 58%. Look at this, guys. Every single stock is bleeding in the red. I'm talking massive losses. This guy went from 14 billion to less than 4 billion, dropped 40th in the ranks for hedge funds, guys. Do you see this right now? You need to understand this is going to be one of the most crazy buying opportunities there ever was for technology because of, you know, this inflation, okay? This is incredible to me, okay? Every single stock I mean, literally the best stock he had was CrowdStrike. That's only down 3%. So as you can see, every single one of his companies are completely shattered. And he even has more. So diversification does nothing. When all technology is getting hammered, it does nothing. Okay. You just need to pick high quality growth. Instead of, you know, doing what he's doing, you know, buying 30 to 50 stocks, I recommend going with, you know, three to five and diversify just a little bit because you need to narrow down on what companies are going to truly be the winners and hopefully you hit it big because this is diversification and this is not working. He lost 39 spots in his hedge fund ranking. All right, so we're following about 97 growth stocks right now, okay? And you can see we had a little bit of uh, stocks in the red, but, you know, majority of stocks did finish in the green. Amazon and Apple break even, uh, Twitter break even, uh, continue scrolling, Walt Disney 1% gain, Zscaler 2%, Lending Club about 3% gain, Palantir 3%, SoFi did almost in the middle tier today about 3.4%. Tesla 3, uh, continue to scroll up. We have uh, Netflix, almost 5%. Um, continue to scroll on Facebook and NVIDIA are really bouncing hard, 5% gains. But guys, what I want you to see is you're going to see after these mega cap turds report it, you know, and having super slow growth, absolutely killing the indexes. Look at what stocks are really rallying today towards the top, okay? It's going to correlate to the earnings heading out this week. We have Shopify up 6%, Block up 6%, uh, Robinhood, that's a no comment, guys. I cannot believe Robinhood is up 7% today. You saw the earnings, losing users, declining growth, uh, no guidance for the full year. I think they're buying their shares back, to be honest with you. I think Robinhood is buying shares and you know they're going to report it in like a month or two. They have to be buying because there's no way this stock is ripping like that uh, after that type of earnings. So we have Open Door up 7%, Coinbase up 7%. We also have DraftKings up 9, Upstart up 11, FUBU up 12. So remember some of these names, guys. FUBU, DraftKings, Upstart. Let's take a look at the earnings we have heading into next week. Also Open Door. But you can see, guys, look at these, you know, anticipation run-ups for these earnings. DraftKings is reporting this week. They were one of the biggest winners today. Block, also Shopify. We also have FUBU. So all these companies had high growth in their previous earnings. They're now having big run-ups heading into their upcoming earnings. So all these companies that you're seeing up 5% today, they have earnings this week, guys. So be on the lookout for Shopify Block and uh, DraftKings. These are some of the big growth stocks that you know some of the newer uh, investors are in. But these stocks are rallying into earnings. That is a good sign. Now, as for SoFi, we can see the short interest is declining. I mean, even with you know near 20% short interest, I think you know these guys can really lose a lot of money uh, betting on SoFi to fail at these levels. You can see they're covering a little bit. We got short interest as high as 21 to 22%, I believe. Still 142 million shares sold short. And that's really why you're not seeing SoFi rip more into the 5 to 10% range like, you know, an upstart or a DraftKings because the short interest is incredible. The reason why the short interest is so incredible holding this stock back and the reason why this stock has been held back, in my personal opinion, is the student loans. Even though we know student loans is really not taking the business down it's a psychology factor and you've had 20 to 40 you know bearish you know paid basher articles come out there scare retail and allow them to pack in the short interest 
because student loans have been extended for two and a half years and Biden keeps using this as a reason to, you know, uh, you know, get into his midterm votes and, you know, keep, you know, delivering on promises that he's not, you know, keeping up to. And that's what you're seeing. You're seeing the daily news fluctuation on student loans change every day. 10,000, 50,000 startup, non-startup. It's just a manipulation for these midterms, guys. And I believe Biden is going to push it, you know, to the last second, the last week of votes because, you know, he wants the, you know, psychology factor to stay in, you know, the students' minds that he's helping them out. Okay. So he doesn't want to do it now because because there's going to be too large of a time frame in between his midterms and they're going to forget about him. So he wants to keep it as close to midterms as possible when they really do lay down a forgiveness of potentially, you know, 10K, etc. So that's my personal opinion. They're trying to push it out as close to midterms as possible. And just look at the headlines. It's incredible, guys. It changes daily. Student loans, 50K, you type it in four days ago. Student loan forgiveness, don't expect 50,000 in relief, uh, says Biden. Okay, this is the headline. Now we got a different one. White House officials weigh income limits for student loan forgiveness. So now it's not going to be everyone for student loans. It's going to be, you know, just the lower income uh, that are going to get the forgiveness. So they just keep changing the headline because these headlines are making money, okay? Millions upon millions of students are clicking these headlines because there's 40, 50 million people out there with student loans. That's why I believe you're seeing so many different articles, you know, change the headline daily. AOC, those who paid off student loans should support debt forgiveness. Please drop a comment. If you don't know who the AOC is, who is AOC? Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. This is a United States representative. She is in the Democratic Party. Do you hear what she is telling people? Those who paid off student loans should support debt Debt forgiveness. I paid off my student loans. I can't believe what I'm reading, guys. Be sure to drop a comment. Is this lady losing her mind? Does she really expect people to support what they're trying to do with these student loans, guys? This is absolutely incredible. So be sure to drop a comment on you know what she is telling people to do. Okay, those who paid off student loans should support debt forgiveness. Wow. And you know, guys, it just doesn't stop. This is May 2nd. This is literally two hours ago after I'm filming this video. How much in student uh, debt could Biden forgive? Here's what's on the table. They're not going to stop writing these headlines. They are getting sales and clicks for advertising, okay? That's why you're going to continue to see these. And this is why SoFi is not really ripping. But guys, SoFi has an opportunity to separate itself from these student loans on earnings. If they have a lot of users added to the platform, if they kill revenue, beat their EPS, and guide for bigger guidance, we can get past this even with student loans, you know, extended out for two and a half years for uh, federal loans. If you made it to the end of the video, I want to say I really do appreciate it. I enjoyed doing this video for you. I know it's been a very rough ride for SoFi, even though they beat their last six months of earnings, we have literally headed to all-time lows. And how is that possible? It's because the student loan headline is getting pushed day in and day out, week in and week out. And it's a reason to short SoFi because the headlines are just insane for you know negativity. So we need to get by this. We know the banks have you know cut our price targets to 10 across the board. SoFi really needs to have a big beat and a big guidance raise. And I believe they can do that because their Q2 earnings have the bank charter fully kicking in you know cutting down costs making more profits you know making more dollars so i really want to see what the guidance is looking like i do think they're going to beat i do think they're going to add 300 to 350,000 members uh, to the platform i really think that bank charter with that you know one percent interest that they're you know giving out to the people is really going to help add a lot of people to the platform so so far is doing very good uh but they are not profitable quite yet but we need to just give them a little bit more time we will make it past this student loan two and a half year Biden midterm, you know, ordeal. Okay. So be patient and understand even some of the biggest money managers in the world, like you saw with Brad Gerstner, he went from number four to over 40. That is terrible. Okay. Diversification has not helped him at all. So be sure to pick your, you know, high conviction stocks and, you know, diamond hand because we will get past this nasty correction in the NASDAQ. Once again, my name is Kyle. Hope you have a great day.